Section 11, Database System Architecture. The architecture of a database system is greatly influenced by the underlying computer system on which the database system runs. Aspects of the computer architecture, such as networking, parallelism, and distribution are reflected in the architecture of the database system. This session seeks to introduce students to the various types of database system architecture. At the end of this session, you'll be able to state and explain the various database system architecture, explain with illustrations a centralized database architecture, understand the categories of server system architecture, and identify the various types of network topologies that suit the various database architectures. The key topics to be covered in the session are centralized system, client server system, parallel system, and distributed systems. These are the reading list pertaining to this session. Now, let's start with the centralized systems. A database system can be classified according to the number of users. You can have the multi-user and you can also have the single user. The configuration of the hardware and the size of the organization will determine whether it is a multi-user system or a single user system. Now, in the single user system, the database resides on one computer and is only accessed by one user at a time. This one user may design, maintain, and write the database programs. Due to the large amount of data management, most systems are multi-user systems. In this situation, the data are both integrated and shared. A database is integrated when the same information is not recorded in two places. Now, with a centralized system. The centralized system of databases consists of a single processor together with its associated data storage and other peripherals. So you have the data storage devices and other peripherals with the processor at the same location. It is geographically defined to a single location. Data can be accessed from the multi-site with the use of a computer network, whilst the database is maintained at the centralized site. So everything is at a location, whilst the data could be accessed from different locations. And this is the centralized database system. Now, this is a typical setup of a centralized database system. Now, let's look at some of the disadvantages of a centralized database system. Now, when the central site computer or database system goes down, then everyone is blocked from using the system until the system comes back because of the centralized nature of it. Communication costs from the terminal to the centralized site can be very expensive because you have the centralized site whilst you have different uh, terminals. Terminals are partial computer systems that can enter or that can be used to enter or retrieve data from, the, from a location. And this is also a cost to the system. These are the individual and then the forum questions. At the right time, it will be posted to the Sakai platform for your perusal. Now, let's also look at the client-server systems. We have just looked at the centralized system. With the client-server system architecture, we have the logical component as well as the physical component. The server computers that are used in this system are called back-end, and the client systems are called the front end of the database. With the client server, we're talking about a server 
and client stations. So there is a relationship between the server and then the client stations, the workstations. The database management system in turn possesses this request and return the results to the client. That is, if there is a request from the server. Client server architecture handles the geographical user interface and does not and thus computations and other programming of interest to the end user. The server handles all the parts of the job and then send all the requests to the client stations. For a client server architecture, we have the single tier, we have the two tier, and then we have the three tier system. For the single tier system, the database is centralized which means that the database system and then the data reside in one location. But with the two-tier architecture, the database has two levels. It has the interface and the client stations all having different levels. And of course, with the three-tier, we have three different levels. We have the first level, we have the second level, and then we have the third level forming the three-tier architecture. Now, the first level, the user interface which runs on the end user computer system is present. The application server, which is also the business, handling the business logic and other data processing is present. And then the database server is also present. Unlike the two tier where you have the interface and then the application, with the three tier, we have the database as well. And that forms the three tier architecture. There are so many advantages of the client server architecture, and I would like to consider some few. Now, the client server system has less expensive platform to support application that had previously been running. Be running. It also offers icon base, that's the menu base or the Windows base system. Client server environment for state more than one workstation and of course in more productive work environments. There are also some few disadvantages like programming costs, the lack of management control tools and what have you all associated with the client server systems. Now with this let's turn our attention to the parallel systems. We have looked at the centralized, the client server, and now we want to look at the parallel systems. Parallel database system architecture consists of multiple central processing units and data storage disks in parallel. Hence, they improve processing and input speeds. Parallel database systems are used in the application that have to query extremely large databases so that they can be processed simultaneously. Now, in parallel database system, we have different systems running concurrently, and the system could be queried extensively, and then, of course, extremely large databases or that have to process an extremely large amount of transaction per second are all carried out in the parallel systems. There are some advantages over the other systems. For example, the parallel database systems are very useful for applications that have to query extremely large data, amount of data. In the parallel database system, throughout the operations, there's a number of tasks that can be completed in a given time because you have it running simultaneously. Of course, there are also some few disadvantages. In a parallel database system, there's a startup cost, which is associated with the initiating a single process. And the startup cost may overshadow the actual processing time, affecting the speed and other things. Sometimes, there are also costs associated with overheads. And this could also be some of the disadvantages of parallel system. Lastly, let's turn our attention to distributed systems. 
Now we have looked at the centralized, the client server, and the parallel system. Finally, let's look at the distributed systems. A logically interrelated collection of shared data physically distributed over a computer network is known as distributed database. And the software system that per permits the management of the distributed database and makes the distribution transparent to users is called distributed database management system. It consists of a single logical database that is split into a number of fragments. Each fragment is stored on one or more computers under control of a separate database management system with the computers connected by a communication network. So we have different systems that are acting as distributed, stored on the system, and they are, they are connected using communication networks. This is a typical example of a distributed system. Now, we have different servers that will be having the software, the database management system, and then it's also distributed on this service. And then it's connected by communication channels for other end users to have access to the resources. These are some of the advantages. Distributed database architecture provides a greater efficiency compared to the three that we have looked at. A single database on the server can be shared across several distance client stations because of the distributed servers and systems available. It causes less impact on ongoing operation when adding new locations. And of course, recovery from failure is more complex in distributed system than in centralized system because we have different systems that are all operating, no parallel but distributed. When there's a fault, there's a problem, there's failure of the system is much felt than the centralized system. And this is where we'll bring this database system architecture to an end and we'll continue briefly after you have looked at these references that are available for you and it will be available on Sakai as well. See you in my next session class. Thank you.